Okay. Uh, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fei Fei, and uh, I'm a graduate student. I am Professor Liu's group. So um, both Professor Liu and Professor Wang couldn't come here to give the talk due to time conflicts. Therefore, um, I will present it instead. So the topic um, is about low-cost lab on a chip um, sensor platform for point of care applications. Um, I will start from the uh, some a uh, basic background of the lab on a chip technology. So uh, in general, lab on a chip devices, uh, it, um, they integrate one or multi functions on a single chip within uh, several centimeter square uh, area. And uh, um, it can be widely used for biosensing uh, or biomedical ap uh, various biomedical applications. The photos just uh, um, the two photos are the uh, photo of the uh, lab on chip devices, and you can see the size is uh, roughly about the same as a uh, dime. Uh, dime. Um, here are some advantages of the uh, uh, of the this um, chips. So first, uh, because it's very small, therefore the fluid uh, volumes consumption is very low, and uh, also the uh, response time and the analysis time is fast. Um, moreover, due to the high uh, integration, therefore the uh, the chip is very compact and it's very easy to carry around. Uh, in the end, so if uh, we um, the fabrication cost could be low when uh, we produce it massively. So here is uh, what we are planning to do. We are planning to develop uh, develop a, um, a sensor. Uh, combine microfluid channels with uh, CMOS detection arrays to do a uh, uh, lab on chip imaging, and uh, moreover, we want to. Um, so this sensor is used to uh, require uh, acquire data, and we want to uh, combine this one with a cell phone or with a standalone reader to read out the data and send it through internet or a, um, cell phone network to a central station. And the uh, central station will do all the uh, imaging reconstruction and analysis and send a report to the uh, users. By doing this, we can have all the advantages of the lab on a chip uh, sensor, like the um, very low uh, fluid consumption and very compact. And we can also utilize the uh, very um, the power of the central station, like the computational power, it could be pr uh, process the image very fast. And by uh, uh, by doing this, uh, so we can um, this uh, equipment can be used for uh, point of care. Mm. Okay. Um, here are examples of uh, some uh, lab on chip imaging devices developed by other groups. Uh, figure A and uh, Figure C are the devices developed by a group in Caltech, and uh, basically they use uh, they utilize the different trans uh, transmittance of the objects, and uh, uh, they use uh, they use a uniform illumination, and uh, when the object flows through the microfluid channel at different area, it will uh, it will attenuate the light differently. Therefore, um, it will leave an image on the C uh, CMOS sensor, and uh, they do numerical uh, numerical process of the image. They can acquire the 2D image of the objects, like uh, in Figure B and the Figure D. So this is uh, another uh, type of device uh, developed by a group uh, in UCLA. And uh, basically, they instead of using the trans, uh, tra different transmitters in the object, they utilize digital holography. So um, the device in Figure A, they uh, shine the light from different angles, uh, and then record the um, digital holography on CCD. By numerically reconstruct it, they can acquire the um, uh, 3D information of the object like the position and the height of the object. Figure C is uh, another, another type, type of device dev developed by the same group. They acquire a 2D, uh, 2D image, but because um, they, combine, uh, they combined compressing sensing in the numerical algorithm, therefore they can acquire the subpixel resolution. So here is what uh, we want to do for, um, so here is a, 
uh, design for our structure. We also uh, want to utilize uh, LD, LED illumination, and uh, um, we want to design some uh, uh, aperture, uh, some illumination mask, and uh, to generate a certain electric field within the channel. And uh, the uh, ob uh, the cells flow through the object uh, microfluid channel, and uh, we will have an image on the C uh, CMOS sensors. So um, basically, we want to use the image detected in the CMOS sensor to reconstruct the 3D image, or at least get some 3D information of the bio um, samples. Here is uh, um, some simulation results. So um, as you can see in figure B and figure C, if the object is at different position, the electric, uh, electric, the intensity we are required on the bottom uh, are changed. And you can also think if we have different objects, the intensity at different uh, sensor at the sensor is also changed. Therefore, we want to um, record this intensity and based on this, develop a numerical algorithm to get the 3D information of the object. We will use the angular spectrum method to uh, find the electric field distribution at the object position. And uh, um, to do so, we, we want to use partial coherence light. So first, it can um, uh, generate the holography uh, images. And also, it can reduce the coherence noise in, uh, in the reconstruction part. So um, we want to find the good illumination field in order, uh, in order to get uh, more detailed uh, uh, to resolving the fine feature of the sample. And here is the fabrication part. So uh, the fabrication of the proof of con concept device. So the uh, uh, CMOS sensor um, is on the bottom, and we, have a uh, we put a glass on top of the sensor and then deposit either a metal film or a dielectric film. We use uh, a photolithography or e-beam lithography to fabricate the object, um, to fabricate the object as it's shown in figure B, and then deposit a spacer layer SU8. Uh, after that, we um, get the, um, use lithography to get the shape we want, and after that, we deposit another layer as shown in figure E. And then uh, use, also use lithography to fabricate the uh, pattern we want on top of it. So finally, we will shine a light from the top, and the CMA sensor will record the intensity on the bottom. And we acquire the data, we, we will do a numerical reconstruction to get the images. So um, this is a current set status. Uh, we developed the uh, image reconstruction code based on angular spectrum me uh, method. And currently, we are working on the illumination mask design. For the fabrication part, um, the Professor Wang student is working on the fabrication details. And the future work, um, um, we will finish the design of the plasmonic mask and then fabricate a proof of concept of, uh, sample and uh, to uh, test our reconstruction code based on uh, an object where uh, we know exactly the shape and the size. And uh, after that, we will actually fabricate the microfluid channel with the CMOS sensor and the flow through a uh, flow living cell through it to um, do the 3D image reconstruction of living cells. And then we probably will um, explore the applications for um, uh, like blood cell counting, something like that, and then develop prototype device. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Um, any questions? Okay. Thank you.